Thank you, uh, <coughs> Chairperson, uh, Mr. Preva, Dr. Fitzgerald, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to thank the Institute for its timely initiative in focusing a spotlight on our complex and little understood, better understood since Ryan had spoke, area of public policy, and of course for the invitation. I see many familiar faces here who toil in our little vineyard. Um, I'm also aware that many more of you are not as conversant with the minutiae of the common fisheries policy. As you are probably aware, the Federation of Irish Fishermen, of which my organisation is a member, is hosting a day-long seminar tomorrow on this very subject. We in the Federation are heavily engaged with the common fisheries policy reform process, but you will appreciate that we'll not be in a position to finalise our views until the completion of our deliberations. This is my get-out clause. <laughs> you can take it, therefore, that the views and perspectives I outlined here are my own and somewhat provisional, and I only have time to address some of the issues. Mr. Prever has given you a comprehensive description of the process we're embarked on, and I sh actually share much of his analysis relating to micromanagement and the failings of the current policy. Agreeing that something is broken is usually a good first step in solving anything. Um, by way of a note of criticism, possibly, the, the central note of the uh, role of the European Commission in fisheries places a huge responsibility on it in the whole process. And I must say that some of our current experiences, where there seems to be unseemly haste in finalising some far-reaching measures related to fisheries control and technical measures in the advance of the adoption of the Lisbon Treaty, and significant issues with regard to the interpretation of existing legislation strike a discordant note with us as we embark on this enterprise. I just want to make some general remarks about the background to and the aims of the reform process. Fishing is essentially a pretty simple business. As Billy Connolly, I'm surprised to hear me quoting Billy Connolly, put it, you know, row it boat, throw it netty, catch it fishy, sell it fishy, cook it fishy, fishy, munchity, crunchity. <laughs> that was his summary of the CFP. <laughs> However, fisheries policy and management is, on the other hand, pretty complex. The problem is that the fish are under the sea. We can't see them or tell how many of them are there, except in pretty hazy terms. They move around in a most inconvenient manner. <laughs> they are subject to biological processes that we, are only par we only partially understand. And in the EU waters, we have fishermen from dozens of countries trying to catch them. <coughs> and the fishermen are pretty good at what they do. We have devised, and I'm using a collective we here rather than blaming the Commission the laws. Um, we have devised regulations to manage stocks, and when we think they haven't worked, we devise some more complex regulations. Nobody believes anyone. Some people respect the rules, others don't. Some people adapt and technology changes. Everything has to go to Brussels for decision. Countries will jockey for advantage, rules will change from year to year. Solutions deemed to work in one area are imposed, we think, willy-nilly on others. No one knows where they stand, and the biggest impulse is to catch more now. Attempts are made to circumvent rules, more rules and more confusion. And the system consumes the energies of a lot of very good people, but we rarely seem to get positive outcomes. Indeed, practically every participant in the system, I believe, is deeply unhappy. And the, thus the common fisheries policy is, I believe, one of the European project's most abject failures. And that's where I see where we are. Some fish stocks are indeed in considerable <coughs> trouble in the EU. Others, mind you, are patently not. Many parts of the European and indeed Irish fishing industry are in deep and continual crisis. <coughs> There remains, however, an, an absolute imperative of having an effective CFP because the resource is shared between many countries and interests. I do not hold with the rejectionists or the secessionists, which there are some. An essential prerequisite to reversing the current abject state is that responsibility for that failure must be clearly acknowledged by policymakers, by managers, by scientists, by fishermen, and indeed leaders of fishermen's organisations such as myself. We have all made mistakes. It is not good enough and not true for anyone to imply that the fault for failure lies solely at the hands of allegedly irresponsible fishermen and irresponsible politicians. 
although we do have some of both. We need to concentrate on solutions, but any such solutions will not be found if we do not have a clear and honest analysis of how we got here. The, the reform process can only be effective in producing results if the process itself is designed to change the nature of the dialogue between the stakeholders. I am not sure if this is understood as well as it might be by those who should understand it. While the, some key aspects of the existing policy are superficially common on an EU-wide basis, we have in fact, as long as it isn't named, let me, I don't mind. Uh, we have a multilateral system and wild, widely different systems of administration, of resource allocation within countries, and wildly different levels of controls and sanctions for misbehaviour. Harmonising some key pillars of a, reviewed, a renewed CFP is essential, as is their implementation on a genuinely common footing. Some general points then, and these will be familiar from, from what we've just heard from Reinhardt. Establishing an appropriate hierarchy of decision-making is a key element to avoid excruciating reference of practically all management issues to the top. We need tiers of subsidiarity, which would mean decisions and responsibilities being taken at appropriate levels. Thus, I am in favour of some regionalisation. The ground rules and scope for such regionalisation must be properly thought out, or we will, set up with, we will end up with a set of mini-CFPs which will be even more incoherent and ineffective. We have an, an, an environmental dimension which is increasingly important, and I, unlike others maybe, welcome that. Care for biodiversity and the future existence of the resource is seen quite correctly as being essential for society and indeed good for fishermen. The implications of legislation such as habitats and birds directives will also require to be factored into the CFP process. A major difficulty for us is that the environmental bar, if I can call it that, is not fixed and we have to contend with ever-changing demands which undermines confidence and leads to continued instability. There must be reasonableness and balance in the decisions we arrive at. I note, for example, that half of the online responses on the e to the EU Green Paper on the Commission's website to date are part of an orchestrated campaign to make 40% of Europe's waters marine protected areas and to ban bottom trawling for fishing. This is not reasonable. Commercial fishing is an economic activity which seeks to make a profit. It is, it is a vital part of the economy and fulfills a vital <coughs> consumer need. We need people making profits, earning incomes and sustaining the economic and social life of both the regions. The current ever-changing management landscape is crippling to the fishing industry. The economic questions also extend to dealing with who has access to the resource. There are value judgments to be made, and I am not a believer that such decisions should be left entirely to the market, with those with access to capital being the only ones to benefit. It is, does, does not make sense economically, regardless of how the simplicity of it might seem to some. Neither am I in favour of a system being put in place that would allow access to fisheries resources to be diverted by market means between different countries in the EU. Although I note something of a predisposition towards effective international marketability of such resources in the Commission's Green Paper. However, I take Reinhardt's words that he's open on the subject. In other words, I'm calling for economic and social diversity to be protected in the CFP as well as biodiversity. However, I do not necessarily share, in all cases, the Irish government's apparent determination to keep public uh, the public ownership model of access to the resource as we currently have. We need to have a pragmatic look at the appropriateness of the long-term assignment of rights, and we need to have a frank and reasoned debate within this country about that. A major conundrum in fisheries management and the effective operation of the CFP is the difficulty in achieving reliable estimates of stock levels and trends. The state of the science is pretty terrible. Not the fault of scientists, I hasten to add, but of the system and the culture which does not provide them with the requisite data on a reliable and consistent basis. Rectifying this by internalising and incentivising it into the new CFP over time is essential. The question of responsibility is one that exercises us greatly. P 
People who are given responsibility are far more likely to act responsibly. Enlightened co-management with appropriate regulation where fishing interests are at the heart of decision-making relevant to them must be part of the new dispensation. Not on every issue, issue, but as partners in managing particular regional stocks. An overall framework of applicable tools with the parameters for their use should be defined at EU level but with the detail of individual ecosystem or stock management being decided within those parameters on a regional basis. That way we protect the interests of the various stakeholders. I am convinced that while there will always be tension between managers, regulators, environmentalists, scientists and fishermen, that we can go a long, long way if we have the will and the patience to achieve a partnership approach and a com commonality of control which would make everyone's job a lot easier. A few demonstrable successes will also be a great help, and there are precious few on the ground. We need a common fishery policy that is properly resourced. While the development of a new CFP can in time achieve more cost-effective management, it must be recognised that there are likely to be upfront additional costs in achieving that transition. This is a key test of the political will to achieve change. Such financing has to be based on leveraging structural change rather than short-term maintenance. And I think in this I might agree with the European Commission, although I'm not sure, as usual, am I seeing the world the same the way they do. <laughs> we are not starting from a blank canvas. That adds to the challenge of reform. There is a lot of hype and expectation related to the current review of the Common Fisheries Policy. And there is a very real danger that such hopes will be disappointed if we're not careful. Different countries, and the industries in them, are in fact quite happy with elements of the current setup, often based on large investments in individual quota or other previous decisions. They fear that certain types of change will disadvantage their countries in certain respects. That is a very, very important uh, parameter to bear in mind in this whole thing, that we are not starting from a clean slate and therefore we need a very a great deal of consideration to be given to transition as well as the decisions themselves. To define the challenge of reform, I would say the objective of our enterprise should be not to replace the current system all at once, but to establish first order high level policy with a trajectory for multi-annual, with, with multi-annual parameters over a fixed period of time for the implementation of that, which is clearly understood by all. We need to know where we're going. We must have a reliable assessment of the appropriate fleet size and profile which can profitably fish the resource on a sustainable basis. This involves assessing fishing capabilities on a realistic basis and not simply on the basis of nominal GT, gross tonnage, which is a, a mass, uh, or kilowatts, which is engine power, as is currently in use. How the management of the market for fisheries products is to be organised within the EU is a further component which must be redefined at an EU level, having regard to the viability of producers, of processors and of distributors, of food security, trade issues and, of course, the consumer. This is an essential further component of the process in which clear and unambiguous timelines need to be established. On the question of overcapacity, too many boats chasing too few fish. Reinhardt is right, I mean, everybody else is at fault, only ourselves. You know. um, but, but the fact is that there is a, an element of oversimplification involved, that too much fishing, and, and so that I caution a little bit against uh, the, 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 the application of this as an idea. Uh, too much fishing potential, which is presumably what is really meant, is a problem that applies differentially in different fisheries in different countries. So we need to be careful how we define the issue and therefore in the consideration of how it should be solved. And if there is going to be adjustment in that, it's going to have to be paid for. We cannot have it paid for by bankruptcy. The possibility of moving away from national catch limits to effort control sounds superficially attractive but is fraught with danger in my view. Apart from the obvious risk that the available effort would be subject to the same fluctuations as we have in quotas, there is a potential for a real threat to stocks from such a move. Our problem, I would regard, is not really so much with quotas, it's the fact that they keep on falling. <laughs>
The issue is also bound up with fishing potential and the distribution of fishing rights and discard policy. Regarding discards, I think it's a fallacy to strive for the elimination of discards in fish. Quite frankly, I think the Commissioner is misguided in this. We can tell him that. <laughs> People forget that many discards are the result of legally imposed minimum landing sizes. We should concentrate on landing fish that people want to buy, not rubbish. We should, of course, seek to minimise unwanted discards through a more sophisticated use of adaptive zonal management and technical measures such as mesh size. But this is a complex issue which should not be dictated by ill-informed sentiment, as I fear it is. I strongly believe that the national limits, the coastal areas in which national fleets have exclusive or priority access, are essential. And I believe that the questions of definition of size and all that are best left to the, to the member states and we, that we need to have an internal debate about that. I believe that, in fact, that there was a considerable case for extending such limits on regional, social and, indeed, environmental grounds. I strongly believe that the Hague preferences, negotiated by the, my, the, the man on my left, uh, which have existed for many years, must be permanently enshrined in the new CFP. There should be a proximity principle instituted which would also be beneficial in environmental terms, and of course to us. I am, of course, totally in favour of additional quotas for Irish fish. I strongly suspect, however, that my colleagues in France, the UK and Spain might have their own views on the subject. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that this reform process is, a, is of critical importance. Survival of many parts of the fishing industry is in considerable doubt due to the immediate short-term pressures that exist right now. But the long-term future for stocks, for the marine environment and for fishing communities hangs on the outcome of the collective deliberations of political, administrative, fisheries and other stakeholders in the EU in the coming months. I hope in this, limited, in this limited time I've been able to give you some idea as to my views of the nature of the challenge, how it might be tackled and some preliminary thoughts as to the way forward. Thank you for your attention.